my name is Lindsay D'Elia and I am a senior majoring in biology. Uh, so I studied abroad in Paris last semester. It was kind of a scary time um, going to Paris. It was in the aftermath of some pretty scary terrorist attacks. So it was like a kind of um, a mix of, of just a lot of fear and anxiety. I happened to be home when the news broke of the attacks. My family and I, it was a Friday night, we were watching the, t the news on TV, and it was my mom, my dad, and I, and the story broke, and we all kind of looked at each other, and there was just this, this silence of, of mourning for what had happened. But we all looked at each other, and I said, I'm still going. And my mom and my dad, they said, yeah. Yeah, you are. We, we still feel good about this. We trust that God is going to take care of you no matter where you go. And knowing that the attacks had happened made me want to be a part of that community in Paris all the more because I, I wanted to be there to talk to people about it, to talk to other students about it, to see what that was, what it was like to experience a little bit of, of that heartbreak in the aftermath of it. I didn't have fear about going because it could happen anywhere, it could happen at any time. So I wasn't afraid. My, my family was really supportive of me going. I had a hard time adjusting at first, um, just feeling like I didn't know the place, I, I wasn't familiar with the area, I had to fumble through a lot of conversations and interactions with people and there are a lot of uh, armed forces or, or military personnel who were guarding various um, government buildings and national monuments, and it was kind of terrifying. My time in Paris um, were some of the hardest months of my life, and it was really hard to stay so close to God in a place that I felt so isolated from other people, from the Point Loma community, from my family, from my home church. Um, it was really difficult. Being isolated means you can't rely on other people to carry your faith. You have to put the time and the effort into it. And for me, that looked a lot like walking to the park down the street and reading my Bible or finding books that would challenge me and ask me questions about my faith that I hadn't considered. And it also looked like having conversations with other students, study abroad students who were from other countries, Sweden, Syria, Argentina, who had different faith backgrounds and had different beliefs and answering their questions about why I was Christian and why I was making the decisions that I was making and why I was choosing to not participate in, in things that they were choosing too. It looked a lot like me seeking out the growth and the conversations rather than waiting for them to come to me. I came in to college with an absolute plan of what I was going to do, what I was going to accomplish in these four years. I mean, I had it, I had it all planned to a T. And slowly, God started to mess with those plans and change them. and. Little by little, I realized what little control I have over my life. For me, on a daily basis, it looks a lot like trusting that God is working for His own glory, and I get to be a small piece of that puzzle. Whatever worries that I have in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't affect my relationship with God because He loves me no matter what. And so I can choose to to be worried and have anxiety about the things that are out of my control, or I can just rest my eyes on God and know that He's leading me where He wants me to go. He'll allow me to abide in Him, to remain in Him. I love the word shalom because it means just like this unending, deep, deep peace. It's undisturbed, it's whole in its peace. There is no space for worry or anxiety in it. And I love that it's used as a greeting, like shalom, peace, peace be with you, peace be, be to you. I think 
peace being a, a word that's almost overused, it can lose its meaning. But shalom was a new word to me. And so it holds its meaning of that undivided peace. For me, that's, that's the place that I seek.